It's been great. Really good. Europe was fantastic. Uh, had a really big gig in Berlin. And uh, just the crowd seemed to dig it, you know. It was great travelling through Europe. All you naughty Brexiteers. But uh, it's great just to travel through the place and uh, really love your fans and come and see the group. Well, it was kind of what one of the special supposed to write songs about, you know. I mean, obviously, there we just sort of picked up on sort of contemporary issues. I personally become quite fascinated with guns and the Americans' attitude to sort of the, the gun culture. So, which is why I introduced that the uh, Valentine's cover, the Blank Blank Feet. Um, but also, I think this time we've address personal issues, which I don't think we did in the past. So then Mark talks about his experience of being an immigrant twice. And, and Terry talks about his, um, you know, his, his um, trials and tribulations with, with, um, with mental um, issues and depression and stuff. So it <laughs> covers all bases, really. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, yes, it's, a, it, it's weird that it, it's the, the, the same issues are still prescient 40 years later. Using a HC20 and also an art, Artist 30. And they've just got a great tone, they've got a great, um, they sort of break in the right ways, it's got a great clean tone. They're the perfect amp for me. I've got um, a Unity 500 and a Unity 250, although, especially sort of coming across as like a reggae band, I have quite a, a middly sound on stage so that there's, there's clarity. And it's quite compact as well. The, day, the days of Huge cabinets, I think, are, are long gone. I mean, the only people who use them are metal bands these, because it's just architecture, you know. So th this is nice, it, it, it's compact, and it, uh, and it packs a punch. The album came out, it went to number one that week, and I was like, wow, that's really cool. That's amazing. I thought we thought it would do pretty well, um, but I never thought that it would, it would go to number one. So I was in the record company that, that week doing interviews and stuff like that and I asked the, one of the guys that we'd be dealing with and I said, how many copies has it actually sold? And he puffed up his chest and he goes, well, Morris, by this weekend we'll have done 40,000 copies. And I was really supposed to be impressed and I just thought, hmm, you know what? Back in 1980, 1979, we would have sold twice that on the day of release and it's still a bit only got to number 22. So, but that sort of really, for me, that sort of put how the industry had changed. You know, um, back then, um, you went on tour to sell records. Now, you put a record out to promote the tour. Um, so, I mean, we're very lucky in that we've been able to, to, to do the both. Just, it just reminded me how the industry had, had changed. There is absolutely no difference between playing on stage now I'm playing on stage in 1979, but other than my body hurts a bit more. My favourite venue in the whole world is um, the Broomfield Tavern in Spon End, Coventry. Um, it's a room about this size, um, and it's just fabulous. And I, I play there in like a, a blues band and a country and western band probably three times a year. And it, it's the highlight of my of my musical career. It's, it's it's great, but it puts playing with the Rolling Stones at the Rico Arena, which we did last year, into perspective. And I, I, that's great. That's sort of yin and the yang. Mm. Let's just make sure you've got some good clothes. Really, is my preparation for a gig. Try and meditate into the uh, arena. And what you're going to be doing that night. Concentrate. Dress well. And smash it. I get nervous. I, oh, I've always got nervous. I still get a bit nervous on pub gigs as well. But, so I, I will sort of take myself away from everybody and I will sit quietly. Um, about 15 minutes beforehand, um, I'll get my guitar and just go through the first couple of songs and just play some, just some, some warm-up stuff. Because I am of advanced years, my, my left hand is starting to sort of seize up a little bit, so I need to, I need to warm it up. Everyone's different, aren't they? I mean, they yeah. like they have different metabolisms. So people can drink seven pints of beer and go on and play a blinder. Yeah. You know, I, I, I drink a pint and a half and I'm, I'm stu I can't mess, I can't do it. I think the young also think the old are foolish, which is the right way around, isn't it? I, I regret not learning to read music, which would have helped me enormously um, 
to get session work, I think, if should have wanted to. I mean, uh, you know, it's all very well people saying, well, Paul McCartney doesn't read music. Paul McCartney doesn't need to read music, to be honest. You well, know? I don't think you do, though. You wrote the bass line to Doesn't Make It All Right, which is one of the most amazing bass lines I can think of. Advice, I would encourage uh, young musicians to buy a duffel coat. <laughs> because they're really good, you can wrap them up and, and you can put them inside the bass drum to baffle them at gigs and they come in really handy um, when the van breaks down at 3 o'clock in the morning, 30 miles south of Carlisle in November. Because if you're in a band, a young band, it will. Playing.